could get around pretty fast to some of you, uh, and this isn't the whole group, but just so you all hear the same message, Mr. Nelson's here to know that I give this message that he and I talked about. Uh, some of you are kind of um, blitzing through, to say the least, on the language acts portion. Not good. Not good for your scores, not good for the school scores, not good for us making decisions on curriculum and other things. Certainly not good if a college asks to see your score, and occasionally they do. Military occasionally asks for those scores. Not good. Um, Maths, we're not going to do that. We're going to take our time. If I think, and I'll be the one, I'm the judge, if I think you're not taking it seriously, if I think you're just rushing through, you will be here for three nights, two and a half hours a night, starting Wednesday. Take your time. It's serious. We make some decisions based upon the data, folks. Yes, it may not automatically appear in your transcript. You may not see some of the point to it, but there's reasons. The taxpayers, your folks, have paid for you to be here and educated, and we do use those numbers. We don't use all of the numbers all of the time, but we use them. We need you to be real serious on it. We take your time. Mr. Nelson has already talked with me about this, and we've agreed that the two and a half hours a night is it. Mr. Quinn is checking to see if you can reset tests. If you can, and you're blowing it off, you're going to have your test reset and do the whole thing again, does it right up here. So, take your time, and it won't be on the first night, Tuesday, that you would stay. You know, we set for a test, it takes at least a day. Thanks. Everybody clear. Yeah. Nice scores. That doesn't mean you're going to get perfect scores, folks. It means you're going to put in <coughs> an honest effort. Right? Mr. Nelson, want to say anything? Just to echo what Mr. Baker said, and that, you know, we, we live in a, in, a, in a society where we have to assess students according to their abilities. And Mr. Baker said this information is valuable in a lot of different ways. It's new to the school, you know, any, anything that you wish. Uh, that you might be doing when you get out of school. And, you know, some people, you know, they love the challenge of a test and assessment to see how well they can do, and others look at it as, as, as more of an effort that they don't think want to be a part of. But we need to demonstrate effort, and we need to demonstrate commitment to trying to make this work and to do the best you can. And it's a strong message that we have, the importance of doing that. And we can't have people Taking it so, if you mind. were the one paying the tax bill, you can better believe you'd want the school doing the best they could and you want the best results you could get. Because there are some rewards for having good scores, and there's some penalties, financial, if the scores are not so good. And you just soon not pay for the same thing. And it's the students that come behind you with curriculum, and Mr. Baker mentioned, is that we need to have a, an indication of what people know based on what's been taught to you. And, you know, students coming through over the next few years, a lot of those decisions are based on how well prepared that you, your group was as far as demonstrating the assessment of the, the maturity of your testing. Yeah. There's also a uh, time over the summer where we'll have the scores. We could potentially say, look, these are so bad that we have to have another class test if we want just asking for your honest effort. There is a two-hour allotment on the first section. That doesn't mean you're going to have to drag on for two hours. Two honest tests. Two hours allotted means it should take between one and two hours. So I'm not expecting that you're going to take the full two, but I'm also not going to accept we're done in six minutes. You're not going to do anything. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Uh, Maddie is videotaping so that those that are not here will be able to see the videotape. It's going to be posted on a special link on Channel 3's website, Maddie? YouTube channel. YouTube channel. Um, you'll only be able to get into it, I'm guessing, if you have the right link. So it's only going to be sent to those not here. Um, just a little bit of information from the script that they've asked me to follow. I know there's a lot of you in here, so as you have comments, raise your hand, please, and I'll call on you, and then we're not all just shoving out all the stuff. Um, the classroom activity introduces students to the context of your performance task, so they are not disadvantaged in demonstrating skills uh, the task intends to assess. 
contextual elements include an understanding of the setting or situation in which the task is placed, potentially unfamiliar concepts that are associated with the scenario, and probably more importantly, key terms and or vocabulary students will need to understand in order to meaningfully engage with and complete the performance task. So we're not trying to teach you, and you can probably see this all about roofing, we're not trying to teach you how to roof. We're trying to teach you the basic vocab and some of the different parts and things. Just so you have an understanding so that if they speak about a trust on the desk, you know basically what they're talking about. Or the shape of it, or if they're talking about getting the chart. Okay. Um, so, here's my script. And I'll go through it, and we'll have places that we can add in some pieces. Uh, the facilitator's goal is to engage students in the mindset of the language, show a person new to roof construction and new to roof trust construction. Today we're going to discuss roof construction to prepare for the roof rehab performance task. That'll be your Tuesday task. Imagine that you and several classmates have volunteered to help build roofs for several homes. To get ready for this task, we'll learn about the vocabulary and concepts needed in your role as a volunteer roofer. Roofs come in all shapes and sizes. And if you notice on the cover, figure one, you get roofs in different shapes and sizes. So you might have a roof that is shaped like this, versus that, versus like this. Probably not. Probably not. Um, why do some roofs appear to be very so during the winter, if there's a heavy snowfall in the area, the snow will come right off the roof. The hope would be that it might fall off, right? Yeah. So you don't have to get up there and shower, right? Why else why might you have roofs come to the steepnesses? The steeper it is, the less likely it's going to collapse. All right. Maybe there's something to do with collapse safety. <laughs> Other ways. Storage room, all right, so a steeper roof maybe gives you more attic storage as opposed to makes it easier for the heating systems. All right, so my other reasons. I have one that's uh, on the back side of my house. Mine was kind of steep on one side and not on the other. Solar panels. Solar panels. So what do I need to do sometimes on that? i got to get up on it. Which one's easier to walk on? <laughs> the flat one. The flat one. So, there's advantages, disadvantages, but yeah, I do have to get up and then get all the snow off because it's pretty flat and holds all that snow. Um, the steeper the roof, the easier it is for snow, branches, whatever, to fall off, slide off, but the roof surface is more dangerous to stand on. The steepness of a roof is called its pitch. Not like musical pitch. This is the roof's pitch. What is the math term that we would use for pitch? Slope. Slope, Duran says. Angle. Is angle first. Okay. Right. Is angle the right word or is slope the right word? Slope. slope. All right, so we're going to talk about slope when we talk about pitch. This is synonymous for roofs. You're on page two. Page two is on the back side of page one. I double clock them. So in figure two, what do you notice about the shape of that roof? It's a triangle. Okay. It's a triangle. Triangle. The whole thing is one big triangle? A bunch of little ones. Okay. Again, Justin? A bunch of little ones. A bunch of little triangles. All right. What else about it? All those little triangles. Rectangular prism. All right. You've got a rectangular prism underneath at the body of the house. Because we're really going to worry about the roofing. There appears to be all those little triangles are congruent. Where else? It looks like the top looks a 90 degree angle. Looks like the top might be a 90 degree angle. We'll talk about that in a minute. The spacing. It's spaced. It looks to be pretty well evenly spaced. Okay. Um, Does anyone know what the triangular sections are called? Not a rich one. 
the trusses. Now, a lot of home construction, particularly a small family home, you don't really build a truss with a rafter system. But we're going to talk about a truss system which is used to build on a larger um, opening. You might use a truss on an opening like the size of the gym. This you could probably do a rafter system on this room easily. Um, rafter you use to stack with the flat when you build a pitch on the truss is one piece dropped in by crane, usually. Or some other kind of device that can drop it in place. So it comes in as is a piece that's all made, and another piece that's all made is just by them up. Uh, so each one of those triangle sections is called a roof, tr roof truss. Each roof needs several trusses. All of the roof trusses together form what's called the roof frame. So what you see there in figure two is the roof frame. All those trusses built together. They're not connected yet. So at that point in time, you don't want a heavy wind to come along. Um, why is it important to have several roof trusses in a frame uh, Weight distribution. Weight distribution. Other ideas. Support. Support. One brace is still in the Hopefully one will still stand if something fails. Trust. We mean trust. <laughs> trust in one. <laughs> Other ideas. Strength. What are you going to put on top of them? More wood. More wood. Right, so you put one on each end of the house. You've got to have something in the middle to take that wood on. So you space them in such a manner that A, you got enough to support the weight of the roofing materials. My solar panels are going on my roof, the snow load, all that other stuff that may be on your roof. Um, but also the space so that there were a standard piece of wood might go down. There's a truss there so you had something to nail the end to. Um, typically that could be 16 inches. Um, somebody said uh, weight distribution, it keeps the roof from sagging, it gives strength, support to the weight of the roof. The roof itself weighs a lot. The pieces of the wood that make, make up the roof trusses are called by different names. So what do you think those pieces are called that make a truss, one truss? What are they made on? Wood. Wood. Do the word for it? Boards. Planks. Plywood. Nature. Now these aren't plywood. Planks. Could be a plank if they're heavy duty. Two by fours. Two by four. It's a piece of two by four. Oh. A piece of? Lumber? Lumber would be a good term. Um, some other ideas. Beam. Usually you think of a beam as a heavier piece of lumber. A brace. A cord. A cord connects two points across the circle. Well, this is really doing basically the same thing. A joist. Joist. J-O-I-S-T. Typically a joist is the horizontal member. It doesn't have to. Lumber, post, rafter, strut, web member, those are all suggested terms. I've not used most of those before. Not for the wood used in building roofs is called by many different names for this performance test. You need, do not need to know all of the different names. You only need to know that all of these different names that I mentioned and some you mentioned refer to the pieces of wood that make up the roof truck. Figure three. Yes. There a from the, wild one. the ridge line of the roof is along the top of all of the trusses. Right about where they put the word ridge line. Right over across the top of the trusses. Why do you suppose it's called a ridge line? What do you mean by the ridge? We're at points. Right? So Ben's saying it's a line where all the points come up. Connect. Other ideas. Who's in girls of summer? See that. What's a ridge? Across the tops of the mountains. Franconia Ridge goes right across the top of the mountains. So 
a ridge line is across all the tops of the, in this case, trusses. Um, you might call it a peak of the roof, um, all along that same idea. Um, there are many different truss designs. If you go to figure four, we have some drawings of a couple of different truss designs. <coughs> specific names. Anybody know a specific name of a particular trust design? That's good. I did not either. Um, <laughs> mainly because I don't build with trusses. I build with food rafters. That's what most homes are. Getting bigger um, <coughs> construction you use trusses always. Um, here's some names that they suggested in my script. Bowstring. I don't know which one it is. Don't know. Cantilever. Cantilever, at least I have an idea that one side leverages another side. <coughs> and they throw in double cantilever. <laughs> <laughs> so whatever cantilever is, it's probably true. A hip truss design. King post, queen post, scissors. Don't know. Vault. <coughs> I've heard of vaulted ceilings, so I'm assuming the vaulted ceiling goes up and then at an angle in. I'm assuming there's a special truss made to do that sort of a design. Scissors, I don't know. I don't know what most of those are. Those are all, I'll just read them again so you kind of have them in mind. Bowstring is a kind of truss. Cantilever, double cantilever, hip, king post, queen post, queen post scissors, vault. Each of these is constructed with a different design. If we look at the left-hand design in figure four, what do you notice? Triangles. All triangles. Why? Why would they do that? They're the strongest shape. shape. Triangles are the strongest shape. Stronger than what's in the right-hand one, which are a series of parallel vertical members. <coughs> yes, it'll hold up a lot of weight. The triangles will hold up more. And I don't know which one is called which design. Just have no idea. Um, for this performance test, you don't need to know the differences. You only need to know that there are different names for different types of trusses. Once the frame is built, the frame is all these trusses put up, right? Once the frame is built, plywood is used to uh, nail down to cover it. Everybody know what plywood is? Mm -hmm. Anybody not know what plywood is? Uh, that plywood is typically, typically called the decking. So when you were talking a minute ago about plywood, Bethany, you were really talking about the decking, the surface that you can walk across. Plywood usually comes in four foot by eight foot sheets. It's a standard size. When plywood is used to cover a roof frame, it is called Decking. It's not usually called plywood at that point. Uh, it's now called decking. Once the decking is on the frame, the roofing material is added to finish the roof. <coughs> and it's on the decking that you're going to nail on your drip edge, your shingles, whatever surface you're going to have that's exposed to the water. Uh, what information might be necessary in order to build a roof? Some ideas. Measurements. Measurements. Oh. Well, what do you measure? Everything. Such as? Um, the house. All right, so without the roof, you need to know probably the <laughs> length and the width. And the height. And does it matter how high it is for the roof? It's going to be the same roof. Angles. Wind direction. Wind direction might be helpful. Climate. Climate. Pitch. Pitch. So climate and pitch. You're in New Mexico. Whoa. Southernmost New Mexico, which would be a more appropriate roof? A? A. 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 Don't have a lot of snow you have to shed. You just need to be able to shed the rain, mostly. New Hampshire, A or B? Right. B probably is going to shed more of your snow. Could you build this in New Hampshire? Yeah. Yeah. You can try. People do. The school has a flat roof. Yeah. Flat roof. The school, prime example. The school is they also have to <laughs> tell them. It's actually inverted. The 
slightly, <laughs> not this much, but slightly, fold it in. And the drain, you can see the drain pipe, I can't quite see it, but there's a drain pipe in that wall. And in a high drain, you can hear the water going down through the wall. Because it's really going through the walls. Well, that's peaceful. Right down that side of the line. That's annoying. <laughs> I have different reasons for it. Um, other things you might need besides the length and width. Height. Height. I think we heard that from Justin. So, oh, thank nice. you. <laughs> the surface area? Surface area. Ah. Okay, so now we know how much decking to buy. Because that's surface area, right? Yes. Okay. And if we know the length and the width, we know all right, how long is that truss going to have to be. If we know the climate, in the pitch, we can, all right, now how much longer are we going to have to go, go this way? And then based upon those drawings in figure four or other, how much longer are you going to need for all that bracing that crisscrosses in the thing? I guess if I'm building it, I'm building the one more like on the left, because I want more triangular support. Um, there's another reason I want to move this more like this, because I can walk on it for my shoulder. I don't have to. If I had that kind of roof, I wouldn't have my solar up here. Hmm. Couldn't walk on it. General questions. What are we at the time here? Ten past. I know this is going to take too It says you are now ready to complete the roof rehab performance task. That's the first thing we're going to do Tuesday. You're going to need your logins that you used with Mrs. Witcher. She's going to get me a master list in case you forget. Um, the papers I need to collect, I'm not allowed to leave those papers. However, before you turn them in, and I know Mrs. Witcher didn't get the mice, I'm not sure if she was aware there are computer mice. If you want a computer mouse for your Chromebook, circle your name. If you don't want one, don't circle it. Now I'll make sure I get enough from somewhere. I, if, I would suggest using one because the graphing is terrible without it. Just, yeah. You will have more schemes to scroll than you know, the box between in the math piece. The box. <laughs> <laughs> it's just the good point. Uh, yeah. 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 That's what we've got. <laughs> Uh, I don't get a mouth. If I don't get a mouth. I'm yeah. not so. <laughs> um, remember. <laughs> remember to read the questions carefully, particularly on the performance test. The first one or two portions, and there's probably six or seven answers. They probably just quit Give me an answer. Seven. The third piece, carrying on, probably have very little scaffolding, meaning they probably don't tell you where to look in the problem for your info, but you're going to have to go find some information from maybe two or three different places and put it all together. And that's where you're going to need to carefully craft your answers in sentences and equations. If it says explain, that means words and or equations. It's not just because it's not. Uh, uh, so take your time on that. Um, you've got the two hours, so you don't have to rush. You should be able to do well. On this performance task, there are four different types of question sets. Everybody will have one. A different school lab and others. There's only four sets that go around the room. Pass it over. Just pass it over. Uh, next thing. All next week, or at least while we're still testing, I'm hoping we're done by five, but we may not. Uh, all next week, hang on to those, please. I can work with one. You're going to eat first lunch. <laughs> Every yes. first lunch. You'll come food. here as soon as first lunch is done. Uh, there's another piece on here. Uh, bring some reading material. Cannot be electronic. I will collect any electronic devices at the door. Recommend don't bring them. Uh, bring textbook if you get homework for another class. Bring a paper book, magazine, something you can read silently in between. Kim first. Your question. Eric. Eric. 
Um, if I wanted to work on my online class, I'm done. Can't. Can't be on any other electronic circuit. Sorry. Um, there is a calculator online on the test question if it's allowed for that portion of the question. It's the only calculator you're allowed. I remember. Keep in mind the zoom in and zoom out. Yeah. How many sections of the map? Uh, you know, I've got to look that up, but I believe there's four. Yeah. Okay. There's probably four counting the performance activity today. Keep in mind the zoom in and zoom out and scrolling. Unfortunately, Control plus the way some of the questions are formatted, they appear to end at the bottom edge of the screen. There's more down below. Sometimes the scroll bars don't appear. The only way to see that is if you zoom out. Oh, there's more stuff down there. Wow, really? Um, yeah, you got to be careful. So uh, make sure you do um, scroll around. Any of your answers, highly recommended you don't just type x squared plus 7x minus 3, that you actually use the equation response editor. Um, we have seen some of the practice ones that just typing it works. We've seen some that it doesn't work. If you use the equation response editor that's provided, and again, sometimes that's cut off on the bottom of the screen. You have to find it. Recommendation, please do use the equation response editor. Um, I know it's not the easiest way to put it in sometimes, but that's the way that I know it will be right, assuming it's right. Other questions? Okay. That's all the pieces I have here. Go to the next case. Mm -hmm. That's what I have. All right, so I'm coming around to pick up the sheets. Yeah, we're going to say we're going to